Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Naufel and today we'll be dealing with impressions in complete denture. A topic everybody thinks is very simple but over the years has become complex due to different techniques and materials being added to the curriculum. Right? So going to the first question, which combination of impression material consistency can be best used for border molding and secondary impression? Now we are all used to working with our normal green stick compound as well as our zinc oxide eugenol as our secondary impression materials. But over the years, we have been using elastomeric impression materials to take care of some of the limitations of green stick along with your zinc oxide eugenol. So the question emphasizes on which type of elastomeric compound viscosity can actually be used as a secondary impression material. The combinations which have been given are heavy body and medium body, putty and light body, putty and medium body or heavy body and light body. So you have to understand with this is the elastomeric impression materials are not being asked. The material are different that is your polysulfides, your silicons as well as your polyether. Here they have been asked about the different viscosities which will be ideal to perform your border molding and follow it up with and secondary impression material. So to understand this question I would Try to use an image based derivative to discuss this questionnaire. So, we have to compare the different viscosities and consistencies of the different elastomeric pressure materials. So, as you can see in this image, the first one signifies a heavy body based consistency. The next one is a medium body followed by the light body. The heavy body has way too much consistency, which, which what I mean by consistency, it is too thick to record it as a secondary impression material. The same goes through for your medium body impression materials as well. They are too thick to record the finer details that are required for a secondary impression material. So what I usually recommend for a secondary material is either going for a light body based consistency or going for a super or ultra light body. So what happens with this impression material is that the better details of your tissue structures are recorded following your border molding procedure. So the comparison that is given to us in the questionnaire is a combination of either putty and light body or heavy body and light body. All right. So to evaluate that scenario, we have putty based material which can be molded in the form of clay. So this is a putty based impression material. So this is molded in any given form and has to be performed in a single step border molding. This has been used in clinics for quite some time with very good results. The only issue with a putty based border molding is that it has to be done in a single step. There is no incremental border molding techniques like you have in the case of your green stick compounds. So ideally in well rounded ridges, a putty light body combination is probably works out for the best compared to that of a heavy body or a medium body based impression material. The disadvantages with putty apart from not allowing incremental techniques is that it gives you a small false hope that you've recorded all the tissues perfectly because you get overextended borders with putty as compared to your green stick. So the question which has been asked, which combination works best? I would say it would be your putty and your light body. The next best what could work out would be your putty and your medium body. A heavy body has a thicker consistency. However, it's not good enough to record your border molding. You want nice thick borders to be recorded. Your heavy body will just collapse when it is pushed against the displaced tissue. Now this question can also be asked in different uh, forms. It could be given which is better, the green stick and zinc oxide eugenol is better compared to your putty and your light body. Well, it depends upon the type of ridges. If they're asking about a well-rounded ridges, then putty light body is the first option. Right? If you've been asked in case of resorbed ridges, your flabby tissues, you have your atrophic ridges, in such scenarios, 
it's better to stick to the traditional form of green stick followed by your zinc oxide eugene oil impression materials the other scenario which has been asked in your in your previous aims ssr questions is whether medium body can also be used it can but the flow would be very reduced so the final results what is obtained is not as expected so going to the next question this is a pretty simple question type 1 and type 2 zinc oxide impression pastes differ with respect to their what okay so this has been asked quite a number of times it's a very simple question to understand that you just have to know about the properties as well as the types of a zinc oxide impression paste according to the classification of a zinc oxide eugenol impression paste there is a type 1 that is referred to as a hard paste and two which is referred to as a soft paste okay so the answer is within the classification itself that how do they differ it is their hardness after setting so as we all know zinc oxide impression paste sets by a reaction called chelation right so the final end product is your zinc eugenolate so both for the type 1 as well as the type 2 impression paste the final end product is the same just that the thickness is slightly more in cases of your type 1 this is mainly because of increase in the number of fillers as well as the zinc oxide content is increased in your type 1 compared to your type 2 as a result the hardness after setting is slightly more compared to your type 2 so this is a very common question asked especially with respect to zinc oxide eugenol there have been variety of questions over the years with respect to their chemical reaction with respect to what fillers can be added to increase or decrease the setting time the expansion which is seen how much is the setting time so these are the common questions that you have to keep in mind when you're revising zinc oxide eugenol so apart from that you have to know the uses and the composition of both the base paste as well as the catalyst that i feel is more than enough with respect to your zinc oxide eugenol coming to the next question now this is an image based question in which they provide you with a type of ridge or type of oral mucosa or oral structure and ask you which type of impression would be favorable for this given clinical situation now as we all know in the last four or five years the image based questions have been increasing so you have to adapt yourself you have to identify first the type of the ridge only then will you be able to answer the supplementary question that follows right so keep keeping that in mind the question while taking impression of the mandibular ridge for complete denture care is taken two the options given are use a tray with a spacer not maintain intimate contact with your tissues use a close fitting tray and follow the normal procedures your traditional techniques now what you have to understand is so ideally we have to understand the type of ridge that has been questioned so if you can see the arrow marks they show a type of soft tissue which is present on the mandibular ridge that is referred to as a flabby tissue that is nothing but soft areolar tissue growing on top of the bone so what you have to understand is what precaution have we to take in the case of a flabby tissue so to understand this all you have to we all know different techniques of impression that is your muco compressive technique your mucostatic techniques your dynamic impression technique as well as your selective pressure so in your muco compressive techniques what we are doing is compressing the tissues to their maximum that is recording them in their functional state so in such a scenario we do not give any kind of space or any kind of relief and we try to exert as much pressure the biggest disadvantage of this technique is that we are recording them in a functional form no tissue is in its functional form 24 7 as a result it recoils which in turn will displace the denture ideally for a flabby tissue 
we cannot use a mucocompressive technique, though we have to record it in its best functional state, it will definitely recoil. So mucocompressive is out of the question. Next, coming to your mucostatic, that is recording the tissues at rest. So what happens at rest is that we are not recording them in their functional form. We are recording them in a relaxed state. But what happens in a flabby tissue in case of a relaxed state is that we are not able to ideally record all the borders because we'll be just recording the tissue and not the ridge space or the depth of the buccal and labial vestibule. As a result, mucostatic is not confirmed for such a flabby tissue region. In case of selective pressure, a technique which all of us recommend or are pleased to use. In this, we relieve those areas of or those landmarks of tissues with which we do not want to exert much force and only exert force on the stress bearing areas. Now this is done with the help of different types of special trays and using something called spacers. So when we have custom special trays for our border molding and secondary impression materials, we are able to exert pressure on your stress bearing areas and relieve those areas which we feel might, might not require as much pressure or we may not require retention or support from those areas. So as a result of which, we obtain a selective based impression. But even for a flabby tissue, this, is, this works, but only if the flabby tissue area is limited to a small proximity. Coming to your dynamic impression, this helps us record impressions both in a functional as well as a relaxed state, which is the need of the art. So for flabby tissues, we can either recommend a dynamic or a selective based impression material. So coming back to the question that was asked, that is, what precaution do we have to take? So the first option, if you see, we have to use a tray with a spacer that actually works because we are relieving those areas in which the tissue growth is more than the normal. In the second option, not maintain intimate contact with the tissue is nothing but your mucostatic impression. Okay, So this is when it does not maintain intimate contact, it is taking that in a relaxed state. So that ideally is not the way to go. So this wouldn't be a right option. Use a close fitting tray. By a close fitting tray, again, would exert a lot of pressure, which would be nothing but a mucocompressive impression technique. Again, we do not require that in case of a flabby tissues. Following normal procedures is also not possible. Hence, the answer would be using a tray with a spacer in which we can either use a dynamic based impression material or we can use a selective impression technique. So if you understood this, this is how ideally image-based scenarios are asked. They give you this type of a ridge, either a maxillary or mandibular, ask you different impression techniques which are possible for such a scenario, the impression materials which can be used in a different scenario, or the different precautions which have to be used. So it can be modified and or altered in different patterns and asked. So you have to first identify the type of ridge that is being mentioned or talked about, for that, you have to check out different images of flabby ridges, knife edge ridges, and admixed or an atrophic ridges. So different types of tissues have to be seen, correlate them with different impression techniques, and what works best has to be related. Coming to the next question, tissue stops are indicated for all these reasons, right? So we used to blindly give our tissue stops and our wax spacers on our custom trays in our undergraduation days. Now it's finally caught up to us. So the question is, where are they all indicated? Are they used to stabilize the tray? To ensure uniform thickness of the materials? Preventing the placement of the tray too far superiorly or anteriorly? Or relieving stresses on the tissues? If you are not aware of what a tissue stop is, remember you used to give a nice wax spacer, suppose you're giving a full mouth spacer, you used to cut out some areas of your wax towards your canine and your molar region depending upon the type of design which you used on your spacers. Now this would also help you create some amount of excess acrylic 
in these areas where you have cut off the wax. We usually use a double molded wax pattern, adapt it upon our primary casts and manipulate a custom trays on that. So the tissue stops, they could be different designs as the case allows us to use and based on that, we fabricate the custom tray. So the question what they mean asked is, do they stabilize the tray? Do they help in orientation of the tray? Do they provide a uniform thickness of the materials or do they help in relieving of your stresses on the tissues? Okay. So ideally, when you create such wax spacer or a design of your uh, wax spacer along with such tissue stops, you're going to get a nice tray which has acrylic bulk in those areas, right? This is going to help you orient the tray in the same position again and again, right? So this helps in preventing the placement of the tray too far. That is a correct point. Also, it ensures uniform thickness of the materials by not allowing excess material to be in a place by displacing the excess material as well. So that is also correct. And because it helps in keeping the same position of your tray while placing and removing, it's also helping in stabilizing the tray. But what a tissue stop does not do is it relieves the stresses on the tissue. It does not do that. You have your different spacer designs, your different custom tray materials, which help you do that. So that is not the job of your tissue stop. Also, when using a custom tray, relieving stresses is not actually a job of it. So what you're doing is trying to get it in a relaxed state, not put much pressure on it. Again, it's the, the, the design of your wax spacer or the custom tray what you fabricated and not from the tissue stop. So that could be the wrong answer. So the D is the incorrect answer as required. Coming to the next question. Now this is a material based question. So most of your impression questions could be material based or technique based apart from your landmarks and apart from your objectives of impression techniques. So this is again a material based question. So you have to know the different materials through your DM and put them into perspective in the prosthodontics. Apart from that, the techniques we should be discussing a little later on will help you get a proper idea of what could be asked in your impressions. So the question is, the choice of impression material in patients with resorbed ridges. The key here is the word resorbed ridges. Okay, so ideally, the choice of impression material for my diagnostic or my primary impression, I use impression compound or alginate and secondary could be either a putty light body combination or a green stick as well as a zinc oxyhydrogenol combination. But here they have not referred to your type of impression, they are just asking you what is the best choice of impression material in patients with resorbed ridges. Okay, So when we are talking about resorbed ridges, what you have to understand is more commonly seen in your mandibular ridge in which there is no bulbous tissue all around. It is in line with the mucosa. So recording something which is almost in line with the mucosa in all directions is not going to be possible. So what best material can be used in such a scenario? So the options given are alginate, green stick along with eugenol, an impression compound with green stick as well as light body, or a putty light body. Okay, so let's just maybe understand you've taken a normal mixture with alginate, you've taken a primary impression, you have a ridge which have been recorded. Now this is completely resorbed on all sides. So just maybe understand it in such a scenario, right? So it's been completely resorbed. Now my special tray will just about sit on the ridge in question. So if I had to record it with an alginate, I would usually be overextending it, right? Because alginate, as you know, is a reversible hydrocolloid. It's more elastic in nature and I would just end up overextending my impression material. So alginate is not ideally used as a secondary based impression material for recording your resorbed ridges. Again, the next three are all perfectly sound impression materials that can be used. All three of them can actually be used. If your special tray extensions are perfect, a green stick and a eugenol 
or a putty and light body, both can actually be used. The problem with putty light body is that, like I mentioned earlier during my discussion, it is again gives you the false impression of you have recorded the tissues. Again, just like alginate, you will end up overextending it, but have the false hope that you have recorded it because putty is like an elastic band, a rubber band. When you press a rubber band against a particular structure, it gives you the, the necessary tightness or the necessary peripheral seal. But when you get your final denture, you will show that it is all overextensions. Okay, so putty light body is not advocated in a scenario with resorbed ridges. Coming to the other two options, that is your green stick eugenol and your impression compound with green stick and light body. So the one of the biggest advantages of impression compound, it has a type two, that is your tray compound. Okay, so ideally what we do is we mix impression compound and green stick in two different ratios and we adapt it over the resorbed ridges. There's a particular technique which we'll be discussing about this a little later on, referred to as the admix technique. But what you have to know right now is that we can use the impression compound and green stick in combination on top of a special tray and get the perfect ridge outline that we so desire. So this, we just place it along the special tray. The tray compound and the huge, and the green stick work in their work their magic on the resorb bridge and give us a perfect, nice secondary based impression. What we require. Now, what you can do is either use a zinc oxide eugenol or a light body on top of this water molding what you have done and get your secondary or your master cast or your secondary impression. So that is seen in your third option. So impression compound with green stick and light body is the best way to record impressions in case of a resorbed ridge.